Hey guys, welcome back, Ricky here. All right, so today we are doing another cut demo for you and uh, I'm making some more dog food, so that's why uh, you're seeing this video today. And today we are doing a Crema versus Kramer test. It's the Damascus versus the carbon version. And so this won't be kind of a full review for these knives, but it kind of would be uh, more or less uh, based on this cutting experience. So I'll start with the carbon knife since it was the first knife used. So I'll go through the list of ingredients and walk you guys through what it felt like. Um, carrots and celery are both really easy. Um, carrots, I mean, again, it's a really nice, hard vegetable that's really uh, kind of easy to cut. Uh, the most annoying thing uh, with both knives was just the amount of carrots that were rolling off the cutting board. But in terms of the actual cutting performance, uh, neither one of those ingredients gave this knife any trouble at all. I tried doing lots of rocking. A lot of folks have been asking me about how these knives feel when they rock. They do have a fairly pronounced belly, uh, and so they actually rocked really well. The only part when I couldn't rock on the carrots were when they got to the very end of the carrot. Uh, I had to do it more of a push cut than a rock. But in most of the video, uh, in terms of the carrot portion, I did as much rocking as I could, and they rocked really well. On the sweet potatoes and the yams, the surprising thing for the carbon version was how well or how easily the knife was actually slicing through half of the ingredient, which was actually pretty amazing. And you know, given that it has a slight rock on the belly, it probably did aid it as well. Uh, but the biggest thing that helped this knife in terms of its slicing ability was how thin or is how thin the cutting tip is on this knife. The cabbage, again, this knife took it, you know, handled it really easily. And so overall, this was a great performer. In terms of its overall weight and balance, I think it's actually quite good. Uh, we'll do a really quick balance test here. And you can see that it's actually nearly 50-50 in terms of its overall balance, which is actually pretty impressive considering that this is a full tang knife and it's got a wooden handle. Um, but the full tang knife actually is a tapering tang, which is interesting because it's a full tang from the profile. So if you look down you know, from the profile area, the tang comes throughout the entire profile of the handle. But if you look at from the very top of, this, of the knife, from the spine down, you can see that it starts to taper as soon as you actually enter the handle and come towards the end of the handle. And so that actually makes it very light in, in the handle area while giving the knife and the handle a good amount of strength and support with the full tang. The wooden handle is, it's nice. It's actually, uh, it has a really nice matte finish to it. It's got, well, matte semi satin finish to it. Um, you definitely can feel the wood, which I actually enjoy. Yeah, you definitely have a better connection with knives when you actually can feel the, you know, the, the grain of the wood. Uh, but definitely very nicely polished all around. There are no sharp edges on the handle anywhere. The choil, very nicely done. The spine, nicely polished, nicely rounded as well. So now over to the Damascus version. This knife is a very interesting knife because uh, being that it is $100 more than the carbon version, you would think that it may be a 25% or 30% better performer. But in actuality, what you're paying for, more or less, in my opinion, is you're paying for the Damascus uh, finish here. And it is a very beautiful knife, there is no doubt. The cutting of the carrots, again, the rocking of this knife is great. It's got the same profile as the carbon version, so in terms of overall rocking, there is no issue there. In terms of sharpness, it definitely felt sharper than the carbon version out of the box. In terms of the chopping ability, again, same profile. It chopped really well, it chopped the carrots really well, and it chopped the celery really well. The only issue that I had in terms of today's test was on the sweet potatoes and the yams. You can definitely see that there is more friction on the Damascus version relative to the carbon version. Again, I had to kind of give it a little bit of grace because this is a brand new knife and there's always a chance of, you know, the the coating wearing off and the coating becoming more slick as I use it and as I wash it. And that is only very apparent when you're cutting very starchy vegetables or fruit uh, next to another knife. The SG2 steel is actually very interesting because it's a very stiff steel. And so if you're not used to cutting with SG2, it's gonna feel like that the blade is actually gripping onto the cutting board. And so that's something you have to get used to. That's something that I'm actually still learning about SG2 in general is SG2 steel does very well when you are doing very linear cuts, linear slices, linear push cuts. It doesn't do too well when you're actually rocking and trying to, you know, trying to move the knife as you're rocking. So just be aware of that. If you're more of a slicer and a chopper, a lateral chopper, quick chopper, SG2 will feel great. Uh, if you're more used to, let's say, using German knives and you're rocking and you're moving the knife all through the cutting board, SG2 may feel a little inhibited and a little 
too stiff for your liking. But now let's talk about the actual knife. The 101 layers of Damascus is certainly one of the most beautiful that you will find. I, <laughs> it's very beautiful, very 3D-like. I mean, it just has a really cool effect to it. But you have to keep in mind, Damascus is all about style. It has nothing to do with actual performance. So when you have a knife that looks this good Damascus-wise and you have another knife with the same steel, with the same profile, with no Damascus, they will actually perform the same. So when you see a Damascus cladded knife, just be aware that you're actually paying for that Damascus styling. You're not paying for any extra performance. The handle of this knife uh, has the same profile and same shape as the carbon version, but it uses the micarta handle for the material. So the pro of the micarta is that it can be machine washed if you were to do it accidentally. Um, I don't recommend you washing any of your professional knives in a dishwasher. The downside of a micarta is that it adds weight to the handle. So we'll do a really quick balance test here. And you can see here that in the same area where I put my finger on the carbon version, the Damascus, uh, you see that it's a very handle heavy knife. And so that is the trade-off. You have a very robust handle that can handle pretty much anything you throw at it, but you sacrifice weight or you gain some weight. So when I think of luxury materials for a knife, I think ebony wooden handles are great because they're nice and dense. So I would have liked to seen this with an ebony handle or even with the same handle as what you see here on the carbon version. So between these two knives, the choice is really up to you. Uh, in my personal opinion, I think that the $300 carbon version is a better overall performer and it has a better handle uh, in terms of its weight. Uh, the SG2 version, again, the Damascus is certainly very beautiful. It has a heftier handle, so that's something that you guys will have to take into consideration. The Damascus finish is really nice. Certainly it is a beautiful knife, but for me, that's not worth the extra hundred bucks that you would spend. To me, I would rather save the hundred bucks and put it towards a great whetstone. Uh, or even some accessories, or even getting a good paring knife, you know, to match up with the carbon version. So here is a question for you. Um, at the point of making this video, the Damascus version is $100 more than the carbon version. But what if, theoretically, they were both the same price of $299? What would your thoughts be then? So I definitely want to hear your thoughts. And uh, that'll be it for this video, folks. Thank you for being here, and we'll catch you in the next video. Based on all of the feedback that you have given me these last few months of making strop blocks, I have started with this strop block here and have ended up with this here. So we went from a 3x9 hard corner edges to a 2.5x10 round edges strop block and uh, I really like the way they have turned out. They are now available. I have very limited supplies of these things. I only make about two or three dozen of these a month. And so I will leave a link in the video description to where you can find these blocks for sale. The leathers that I'm using for my strop blocks are Latical Cowhide, Buffalo Hide, and Shell Cordovan Horse Hide. So the absolute best leathers that I can find. To all of my subscribers, thank you so much for supporting my channel and helping me grow my channel to where it is today. Without you guys, the channel would not be here. So I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart.